Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. Long time no see. Welcome to Let's Master English, the podcast. It's so nice to be back. I have missed you. How have you been? Oh, yeah. Today is podcast number 52. We've got so much stuff. Of course, we got news, vocabulary, a fact from Country Shane, lots of questions from you. I'm going to talk about our past book and our present book in this podcast. It's all coming. So, enough chit chat. Let's begin. Instead of becoming a fireman, 12-year-old Nikolai from Omsk has decided to become a superhero when he gets older, and his prospects are promising. While walking home from school, the pudgy lad leaned up against a lamppost and got shocked due to some bad wiring. The shock sent him to the ground, but he survived, and when he got up, he discovered he had become a living magnet. Coins, spoons, forks, and even ladles now hang off the boy. He's determined to use his newfound superpowers to do good around the world. Aw, it's a nice story. (laughs) Did you understand? Let me go a little bit more slowly. Instead of becoming a fireman, 12-year-old Nikolai from Omsk has decided to become a superhero when he gets older. And his prospects are promising. While walking home from school, the pudgy lad leaned up against a lamp post and got shocked due to some bad wiring. The shock sent him to the ground, but he survived. And when he got up, he discovered he had become a living magnet. Coins, spoons, forks, and even ladles now hang off the boy. He's determined to use his newfound superpowers to do good around the world. It's Super Nikolai. It's great. What a great story. Nikolai. Nikolai, a young boy from Omsk, Russia, has a superpower. He has become a human magnet. Yes, I know... Some of you might like comics, the superheroes like Superman, Batman, the Green Lantern. Well, there's also a superhero called Magneto, but he was actually evil. What movie was he in? What comic was he in? The Avengers? And Perhaps. I I don't really know. I, I just know the name Magneto. Very, very famous. Actually, he's an evil man, so infamous. But this young boy, he's 12, he wants to be a nice superhero and do good things around the world. That's awesome. Nikolai, I support you. I hope that one day you become a very benevolent superhero. (laughs) Okay, so it's a very nice story. Let's go back to the beginning. Lots of vocabulary words today. Listen carefully. Instead of becoming a fireman, 12-year-old Nikolai from Omsk has decided to become a superhero when he gets older. So, there's a boy from Omsk. O-M-S-K. That's a city in Russia. And his name is Nikolai, and he's 12 years old. Now, most 12-year-old boys, when they think about the future, what do they want to be? Well, when I was young, you know, me and my friends, we wanted to be policemen, 
firemen. Maybe some of us wanted to be an archaeologist. Actually, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to look for dinosaurs and, you know, old cultures from a long time ago. That was my interest. Uh, You know, 12-year-old boys, their life is pretty simple. But this boy, he wanted to be a fireman. But then suddenly he changed his mind. When he gets older, he decided that he wanted to become a superhero. A superhero? That's impossible. You can't just become a superhero. Superheroes all have some sort of magical power, except for Batman. But Batman had lots of money. Yeah, as far as I know, all the other superheroes, they had some, you know, magical, mysterious power. But Nikolai, he's a 12-year-old boy. Where are you going to get that magical power? Hmm, I don't think that's possible. But listen to the next sentence. And his prospects are promising. (gasps) Prospects. P-R-O. S-P-E-C-T-S, prospects. That means chances or likelihood. Promising, P-R-O-M-I-S-I-N-G. If something is promising, it has a very good chance of happening. It's, It's looking good. So his prospects are promising, His chances are looking good. The chance that he might be able to become a superhero are really good. Wow. What do you think my prospects are of becoming a super rich man like Bill Gates? Do you think my prospects are promising? No, I don't think my prospects are promising. What do you think my chances are, my likelihood is, of becoming a happily married man? Do you think my prospects are good? Oh, yes. I think my prospects are very promising. Indeed. Absolutely. (laughs) What are your prospects of becoming super rich like Bill Gates? I'm guessing probably not good. Maybe for some of you, uh, maybe it's good. Let's be friends. If there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. I'll I'll do my best. But please, one day, when you, please, one day, remember me. (laughs) Okay, so it's a great expression. Uh, Somebody's prospects are promising, okay? So, this boy's prospects are promising. How does he have Some magical power? Let's listen. While walking home from school, the pudgy lad leaned up against a lamppost and got shocked due to some bad wiring. (gasps) Wow, this story sounds like the Incredible Hulk, if you know about that story. While walking home from school... So this boy, 12 years old, he's a student, of course, and he's walking home from school. The pudgy lad, okay, lad, L-A-D, young boy, pudgy, P-U-D-G-Y, pudgy means fat or chubby, C-H-U-B-B-Y, but it's kind of cute. Now, pudgy is cute when we talk about boys, not really girls. Girls don't like to be fat. So, a pudgy boy, eh, not, you know, I mean, he, he's a cute fat boy. So, anyway, the pudgy lad leaned up against a lamp post. Oh, boy, lots of words here. Lamp post, L-A-M-P-P-O-S-T. One word, a lamp post is a street light. Every street, most streets have street lights. So leaned up against. So this pudgy boy was walking home. He got tired and he leaned, put his body against a street light. Do you understand? Okay, that's easy. We can understand. You're, you're tired. You lean up against a street light. 
You lean up against a wall. You put your weight on the wall. You're standing and you you fall a little bit into the street light so you can rest. So what happened? While walking home from school, the pudgy lad had leaned up against a lamppost and got shocked due to some bad wiring. Due to, because of. Bad wiring. Bad wiring. W-I-R-I-N-G. Faulty wiring. F-A-U-L-T-Y. Faulty wiring. Wires that were old and in bad condition and probably touching. So inside this lamppost, there were some bad wires that were touching each other and he leaned up against the lamppost which is steel and he got an electric shock. Now that's dangerous. That can kill somebody. Okay, let's go to the next sentence. The shock sent him to the ground but he survived. So the shock sent him to the ground. He fell to the ground, of course, but he survived. He's okay. And when he got up, he discovered he had become a living magnet. When he got up, he got up and, of course, he went home. And later, he discovered, he found out he had become a living magnet. A magnet is something that attracts metal. You know, it has a north end and a south end. Are humans magnets? No, no. Actually, I'm a magnet for trouble. Trouble always comes to me. (laughs) I wish I were a magnet for money. I wish I could walk down the street and money just comes to me. We do have the expression, he is a woman magnet. She is a man magnet. Yeah. I'm a mosquito magnet. Mosquitoes love me. Actually, cats love me. And dogs. Yeah, cats and dogs. I'm a pet magnet. (laughs) But I'm not a living magnet. No. Once again, a magnet is something that attracts metal, usually. And this boy became a human magnet. Magnet, a living magnet. Coins, spoons, forks, and even ladles now hang off the boy. So when he's got, he he can put a fork on his body and it sticks because he's a magnet. Even a ladle, L-A-D-L-E, plural, ladles, L-A-D-L-E-S. Ladles, those are those big spoons that we use to take soup and put it into a bowl. Do you understand those really, really, really big spoons? That's a ladle. Ladles are hanging off this boy. Coins, spoons, forks. It's amazing. He has a superpower. The last sentence. He is determined to use his newfound superpowers to do good around the world. He is determined to. He absolutely will do something. What? Use his superpowers. What kind of superpowers? New found. That's one word. N-E-W-F-O-U-N-D. New found. Newly found or discovered. His newly found superpowers to do good around the world. To do good, it's a nice expression. It means to do nice things. This young boy will become the friendly Superman or Magnet Man. What will his name be? Magnet Man. I like that. Eminem. Oh, there's Eminem the rapper. Eminem the candy. Eminem the Magnet Man boy from Russia. Pretty cool. He's Nikolai from Omsk, 12 years old. He will be the future superpower helping the world with his magnetic ability. Isn't that great? Now, there have been stories about people 
who are living magnets. It's amazing. Um, I was searching online for other living magnets, and we have a couple in America. But I noticed there seemed to be many in Russia, uh, in that area, in uh, the Far East, Asia, the the Ural Mountain area. And uh, it's interesting. Why in that area? So I, I know I have many listeners from Russia. Please explain. What is it about your food or your geography or your genetics? What makes you more magnetic than other people? And I'm wondering, I'm wondering, to be honest, I'm just wondering. Because um, I, I took a picture of myself being a magnet and I was successful. But I also did not take a shower for about three days. <laughs> I know, it sounds gross. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think my skin was just very sticky. That's why the spoon stuck to me. It wasn't because I was a magnet. It was because I was sticky, which is kind of gross. <laughs> but I promise I will not tell Nikolai that. I hope that he enjoys his superpower and uh, and does good things. Remember, if you get the newsletter to this podcast, if you get our newsletter, we give you the links. The links um, and you can read about the story. There are many pictures of Nikolai. He looks like a good boy. <laughs> I hope Santa Claus is nice to Nikolai this year. Also, if you get the newsletter, I will include my picture of me being a human magnet. I am not as good as Nikolai, but I concentrated my energy and uh, I was successful. And you can see in the newsletter, I will include that picture. How do you get the newsletter? Well, there are two ways you can get the newsletter. Number one, go to this place, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash try DDM. Okay, and that's all you have to do. Um, Then you'll get an automatic response. You have to respond. You need to verify that, yes, you want the newsletter. Okay, we also offer eight free DDM lessons. If you don't want the the lessons, just say, no, thank you for the lessons, just the newsletter. Okay, no problems. Now, the other way you can sign up is on Facebook. And I have to open my Facebook. Uh, So if you go to my Facebook, which is www.facebook.com slash ESL Coach Shane, you should see there's a button somewhere that says email sign up. Email sign up. And uh, it's in the more section. And if you click on email sign up, it takes you to, yeah, a page where you can put your email address, and that will get you on our list, okay? So you can do it on Facebook, and also you can do it on letsmasterenglish.com slash try DDM, okay? Get the newsletter. It's a great newsletter once a week, or at least whenever I make a podcast. Now, uh, let me go through those words again, and then I'm going to read the story two more times. Vocabulary, OMSK, O-M-S-K, A region, and I believe it's a city also in central Russia. A superhero, someone like Superman. Prospects, chances, likelihood. Promising, looking good, a good chance. Pudgy, chubby, fat, P-U-D-G-Y. Lad, L-A-D, a young boy. Leaned up against. To put your weight on something while standing. A lamp post. L-A-M-P-P-O-S-T. A street light. Due to, because of, bad wiring. Faulty wiring. Wires that are old and touching. Sent him to the ground. Knocked him down. Magnet. M-A-G-N-E-T, magnet, magnet, magnet. Something that attracts metal. 
ladles, L-A-D-L-E-S, large spoons used for filling soup bowls. Newfound, one word, N-E-W-F-O-U-N-D, newly found. Do good, to do good, to do nice things. Let's all do good. Here's the story two more times. Instead of becoming a fireman, 12-year-old Nikolai from Omsk has decided to become a superhero when he gets older. And his prospects are promising. While walking home from school, the pudgy lad leaned up against a lamp post and got shocked due to some bad wiring. The shock sent him to the ground, but he survived. And when he got up, he discovered he had become a living magnet. Coins, spoons, forks, and even ladles now hang off the boy. He's determined to use his newfound superpowers to do good around the world. Instead of becoming a fireman, 12-year-old Nikolai from Omsk has decided to become a superhero when he gets older, and his prospects are promising. While walking home from school, the pudgy lad leaned up against a lamp post and got shocked due to some bad wiring. The shock sent him to the ground, but he survived. And when he got up, he discovered he had become a living magnet. Coins, spoons, forks, and even ladles now hang off the boy. He's determined to use his newfound superpowers to do good around the world. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. Sorry, Nikolai. According to science, you're probably not magnetic. When skin is smooth and unwashed, anything could stick, especially very flat and smooth things like remote controls and poker cards and butter knives. But wash the skin or add some powder or grow some hair, slip, no more stick. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Ah, I hope Nikolai doesn't hear that story. Yeah, I thought so. Sticky skin. If you wash the skin or add some powder, like baby powder, or grow some hair, be a man, grow some hair, shoo, no more stick. And not just metal, but remote controls, those are plastic. And, and poker cards, that's like paper. And butter knives, of course, knives, those will stick, I guess, they're metal. Yeah, but all of that stuff can stick. Ah, oh, Nikolai. Anyway, Nikolai, I love your courage and determination to be a good superhero. Country Shane, be nice. He's just a 12-year-old boy, all full of science. Since when have you been so smart? Anyway, thanks a lot, Country Shane. Let's go to some questions and answers. Our first question comes from the Tube Top 11. And the question is, Coach Shane, what did you say at 4 minutes and 27 seconds? Okay. So, on my Coach Shane's ESL YouTube channel, I have a video titled Pumpkin Carving with Coach Shane. That's right. Pumpkin Carving with Coach Shane. It was for Halloween and I showed myself carving a pumpkin. It was kind of silly. Um, it's easy to find. Just go to YouTube and search for Pumpkin Carving with Coach Shane and you'll find it. And at 4 minutes and 27 seconds, I said this pumpkin is... It was tough to hear, so let me tell you again. 
This pumpkin, pumpkin spelling, by the way, everybody, P-U-M-P-K-I-N, this pumpkin is really hairy on the inside. (laughs) It was. I'm serious. It was really hairy. It had pumpkin hair. What color is pumpkin hair? Well, you'll have to watch the video to find out. Tube Top 11, thank you so much for asking that question. Our next question comes from June Bum, and June Bum is a lifetime member of DDM. June Bum asks to be free of the past or to be free from the past. Which is the right expression or what's the difference between them? What a great question. To be free of means not to have any. Not to have any. So to be free of something means not to have any. To be free of the past means you don't have a past. Okay? I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's look at this. I am free of disease. I have no disease. None. I am free of debt. D-E-B-T. I have no debt. None. Okay? Free of means to not have any. To be free from something means to have no relationship with. Okay? I am free from my parents' control. My parents no longer control me. There is no longer a relationship with my parents and control. American blacks are free from slavery. American black people, citizens, are no longer slaves. Or, you know, for a long time. Thank God. What a horrible thing. But anyway, they are free from slavery. No relationship to slavery anymore. Now, actually, June Bum. Both of these are sometimes very similar and they both might work to be free from something and to be free of something. It's possible. So in your situation, I am free of the past. That could mean whatever happened in the past has no effect on you. Effect, E-F-E-E-C-T. So whatever happened in the past has no effect on you. You are free of the past. No effect. If you want to say, I am free from the past, that means your former bonds, your former relationships are no longer affecting you. So, Junbum, I know that you left your job. So you are free from that company. You are free. That company has no more relationship with you. You can do whatever you want. You are free, June Bum. That's a great question. And I know it's confusing. How do you learn this? Reading, listening, and using the expressions. The best way to learn is to make mistakes. This is a tough one, though. To be free of something means to not have any. To be free from something means to have no relationship with. I hope that helps, Jumbo. Next, we have a question from 5OUU, Ryan. 5OUU, Ryan. Please pronounce this word F-R-A-U-D-U-L-E-N-T-L-Y. Ooh, that's a long word. Okay, so the first part, F-R-A-U-D, fraud, fraud, fraud. It's an A-W sound, fraud, fraud. Now, U-L-E-N-T-Y, if we add that, now it sounds like this, fraudulently. So perfect pronunciation, fraudulently. That's the typical American pronunciation. Some Americans might say fraudulently. Do, do, fraudulently. It sounds a little bit British. 
but most Americans will say fraudulently. Listen carefully again. Perfect pronunciation, perfect standard American pronunciation. Fraudulently, 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 fraudulently. Typical American standard pronunciation. Fraudulently, fraudulently, fraudulently. It's a glottal stop. Fraudulently, fraudulently. Okay? I hope you get that pronunciation down. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. Our next question comes from Jose Luis F.S. Freitas. Dear Coach Shane, congratulations for the great audio lessons. I love the English language, but I have a big problem. I understand you perfectly, as well as other native English speakers, but I find that it is very difficult for me to speak. When I speak, I always make so many mistakes, and I feel so ashamed. Should I give up, or should I visit a psychologist? <laughs> I, I don't think a psychologist will help, but a psychiatrist might help. But no, don't give up. And making mistakes, you bet. That's what happens. We make mistakes. And the best way to learn is to make mistakes. Albert Einstein said that. Michael Jordan said that. They're not lying. It's true. Coach Shane says that. It's absolutely true, Jose. Now, speaking is about confidence. Okay? Confidence. You have to, you have to be able to use your voice confidently. So it doesn't matter if it's in English or your native language or whatever language. Speaking, some people just are afraid to speak. But especially when speaking in another language, be confident. That's the most important thing. So how do you gain confidence? By speaking. Seriously, the only way to gain confidence is to speak. Now, remember, Jose, you can speak by yourself. You don't have to speak with somebody. I used to, I I tell my students this, even when you're in public, like on the subway or on the bus, just get your cell phone and pretend you're talking to somebody in English and just say, just practice basic sentences. Um, hi, John, what do you want for lunch? A hamburger? (laughs) That's so American. (laughs) Okay, I'll see you at 7. And then pretend to hang up. But just practice. Practice speaking to John. Make an imaginary friend named John. Or ladies, make an imaginary American friend named Nancy. No, no, no. Everybody, your imaginary friend is Coach Shane. So on your telephone, speak to Coach Shane. Just practice. Of course, I won't be there. But speak. By speaking, you will improve your confidence. Okay, so after you have some confidence, then you really need to concentrate on pronunciation, intonation, rhythm, and flow. Pronunciation, you have to choose. Do you want American pronunciation? Do you want British pronunciation? It's your choice. I think American is better. Intonation. Uh, Which words should we emphasize? What part of a word do we stress? All of that is actually very important in speaking. Rhythm. How to group words together. Some words should be read quickly together. Other words are slower and more separate. How do you do that? And then flow. How fast or how slow do you read expressions uh, like a human? And actually, Jose, I do have a class that teaches that. And I call it PERF, P-I-R-F, pronunciation, intonation, rhythm, flow, PERF, perfect English. And Jose, I'll be more than happy to send you three months. I'm not three months. Yeah, what the heck? I said three months, three months of PERF for free. I'll give you my first uh, 12 lessons for free. Is that cool, Jose? Yeah, just for you, Jose. Three months, 12 lessons of PERF for free. 
and I think it might help you. But once again, Jose, confidence is the most important thing. The only way to build your English speaking confidence is to speak. And by speaking and by making mistakes, you will improve. And then suddenly you'll improve. And once again, if you can join DDM live and actually speak with me live or join Perf, it's going to be a massive help for you. We have a lot of people just like you, Jose. So join the family. DDM Live, everybody, twice a month, and actually for some people, four times a month, you can actually speak with me. And we can practice your pronunciation. I can listen to your intonation, your rhythm, and your flow. You can ask questions. Uh, it's a great class. DDM Live is a great class. If you want to sign up, Go here, dailydictation.blogspot.com. And Perf is all about speaking, speaking and pronunciation, another excellent class. If you want to sign up for Perf, go here, letsmasterenglish.leadpages, that's L-E-A-D-P-A-G-E-S dot net slash Perf, P-I-R-F. I know it's horrible. We are making a new website. So hopefully by the end of December, everything will be much better. <gasps> it's December 1st. Yay! <clears throat> okay. So anyway, Jose, I hope I gave you some advice. And once again, Jose, three months. Perf. For you. Free. Thank you for your great question. My next question comes from Michael Kalita. Michael, can I... Train my pronunciation by using Google search voice. I'm trying to say the word short, S-H-O-R-T, but I keep getting shark, S-H-A-R-K. What the hell? <laughs> oh, Michael, I love it. Yes, you know, Michael, using Google search voice is a very good way to test your pronunciation. However, it must be perfect pronunciation and I don't know, are you using the Google UK or Google.com? I guess Google.com is probably American English. Maybe Google UK is British. I have no idea. But, Michael, I also use Google search by voice. Um, I use it with my, my phone and, and uh, I love it. It works. I have to speak slowly. So, for example, if I'm looking for uh, a fishing equipment, I will have to say, where can I buy fishing equipment? And Google search will usually get it perfectly. But sometimes... Whatever I do, it cannot hear me. So, is Google search by voice a good way to test your pronunciation? Yes, for most words, but not all. However, for short, I guarantee, uh, where's, hold on a second, let me get my Google, hold on. Okay, Michael, I, I got my phone here, let, let's test this out now. I got Google here, um, is Michael short or is he a shark? Okay, this is what it typed. Is Michael short or is he a shark? Perfect! Absolutely perfect. Uh, so I got short and I got shark perfectly. So, Michael, I want you to keep trying that, okay? <laughs> now, there Eunice uh, was saying, try to say girl. I said it at least 10 times and Google could never understand me. Of course, it's my fault, not Google Voice. Well, let me see. Uh, there, I'm going to try girl. Is there a girl? Okay, so this is what it typed. Is there, T-H-E-R-E, -E, not your name, of course, T-H-A-I-R, uh, a girl, but yeah, girl came out perfectly in Google Voice search. Um, it's not easy. 
Uh, Thayer says, uh, continuing, I succeeded eight times out of ten. <laughs> no problem. But yeah, that's great. Girl. So, so Thayer read girl ten times, eight times Google understood girl. Now remember, everybody, when you use Google Voice search, what when I use it, I speak slowly and clearly. Let me say something really fast. Let me let me try this. Um, is Michael a short girl? Oh wow, it's really matching pictures. Well, I don't want to see any matching pictures. Uh, is Michael a short girl? I asked Google, and it it showed me exactly what I said. Is Michael a short girl? So I guess you can speak fast. Google is good. I'm impressed. Definitely do it, everybody. Do it, give it a try, and tell me your success. Okay, I got another question. This is from Artyom Rod- Rodionov. Rod- Rodionov. Artyom Rodionov. The game is not worth the candle. Could you please explain the cancellation in this expression? <gasps> Ooh, cancellation question. Okay. The game is not. No cancellation, but not is a stop sound. We don't say not. We say not. Not. It's stop at the T. Not. No. Not. The game is not. The game is not. The game is not. Worth the. In this case, the two THs combine, and we don't hear worth the. We hear worth the. Worth the. Worth the. The game is not worth the. The game is not worth the. Candle. Candle. Candle, do not cancel the D. Candle is a context word. It's an important word. 99.999% of the time, the American will pronounce candle as candle. No cancellation except the two THs link together as one. The game is not worth the candle. The game is not worth the candle. The game is not worth the candle. It's a good expression, but a very old expression. Maybe I'll teach it. And he cubed. And one more. This is from Razor Wonder. And I made a video on Coach Shane's ESL uh, about the R sound, the party, and stuff like that. And Razor Wonder said, you should have used words like race, promise, petrol instead because in proper English, the sound R is silent in all these words. Mm-hmm. Hard, party, star. Yeah. He says, H-A-R-D is pronounced hard. And he says, it's very awkward to say hard. And party, yeah. Well, okay. So, Razor Wonder, I'm guessing you are learning or living in or studying British pronunciation. And that's the difference. And that's why if you look in my description, I say I teach American English, not British English. And British English is quite confusing too. There are many types of pronunciation, but you're right. In general, the R pronunciation is quite silent. But I don't know if a British person would say it was silent. I'm not sure. However, (laughs) American pronunciation, the R is very strong and very clear. So like I always say, it's your choice. Do you want to study British pronunciation or American pronunciation? Now, once you choose, then do you want to study London pronunciation Liverpool pronunciation? Do you want to study Manchester pronunciation, Scotland pronunciation, Wales or Welsh pronunciation, American pronunciation? Do you want to study Georgia, Georgia or Texas pronunciation, California dude or New York pronunciation, Wisconsin pronunciation? What kind? There are many, many types of pronunciations. Of course, Standard American English is what I teach. I think my friend on YouTube, I Swear English, he focuses on standard British pronunciation. I love his pronunciation. But I warn you, I warn people who study British pronunciation, be careful. Not only should you probably study British standard pronunciation, but also 
be aware that British English, British vocabulary, in many, 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 many cases, is actually quite different than American vocabulary. And just a simple example, the elevator in America is lift in the UK. And flat in the UK is apartment in America. That's just two examples, but there are literally hundreds of examples in regular daily English. So so be careful with that. Um, and, and other people were there. That's right, American English, da, da, da. So anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate those comments. Remember, everybody, Coach Shane is all about American English, my boy. <laughs> Got it? Thank you so much for the questions. Oh boy, it's already been a long podcast, so I need to wrap it up. Now, first of all, I have to tell you about our English challenge. Every week or every new podcast, we have an English challenge. Now, the winner for English Challenge 29 was Somi Lee. Congratulations. Somi Lee gets one month of their choice. They can have perf or DDM lessons. Isn't that awesome? The English Challenge 29 is done. But right now, we're uploading English Challenge 30. Where? To our Facebook page. Once again, www.facebook.com slash ESL Coach Shane. Go there. You will see English Challenge 30. And to put your answer there. If your answer is right, then you have a chance of getting one month free Perf or DDM classes. Those are great classes, really excellent classes. And I'll tell you a secret. In January, the price of the classes will go up. They're too cheap. However, if you sign up for the classes before January, and we'll probably have something special around Christmas. So you don't have to do it today, but... Uh, you might get a slightly better deal around Christmas. You can do it today, absolutely. We'd love for you to do it today. Um, But you might get a a slightly better deal around Christmas if you buy several months at one time. But that price, I promise, will never change. So people who are signed up now, people who sign up this month, if you got in at a good price, that price will never change. Okay? So that's... Uh, my promise to you. So that's kind of, that's kind of cool. Uh, if you want to try it once again, we got free lessons. Perf, I give you three free lessons. DDM, I give you eight free lessons. Just send me an email, say telling me which lessons you want, and I'm more than happy to send you those free lessons. So that's on Facebook. English Challenge Thirty. Good luck with that. Next, I want to talk about our book club. Last month. We studied the book The Alchemist, a beautiful story about a young boy, a young man who goes on an adventure to find his legend, to find a treasure. And along the way, he discovers much more. He discovers how to be a good human being. It's a beautiful story. It's a great story. Yes, there's some fantasy in the story, but it's a fiction book. That's the nice thing about fiction. You can include some magic. But I really enjoyed the story. It was a great story. And the book club, it's audio. That's what we focus on, audio books. But many of the students actually have the text also, the real book, which is great. So I like to tell students, read the book first, especially if it's in your language. Go ahead and read the book in your language, but then listen to it in English. You can also read the book in English and listen to it in English. That is really excellent. That's like the best. And then later on again, just listen to it. So the book we're studying now is called Wonder by R.J. Palacio. Oh, man, another excellent book. 
This book is actually written for children, but I think adults appreciate the book more than children. I don't know. It's a beautiful book. It's a book that talks about all of us. You are in the book. I am in the book. We are all in the book. And we'll find ourselves in the book. We'll see the situation. We'll understand the situation. It's about a boy who, when he was born, there were lots of problems with his face. But his mind is absolutely perfect. I mean, you know, he's not a genius. He's just normal. So mentally, he's perfect. Physically, well, he's horrible. And it's a story of him going to school for the first time in fifth grade, elementary school. Do you remember how evil kids can be? Sometimes kids can be really evil, and sometimes kids can be really sweet. And the parents, too. And that's what the story is about. It is a wonderful story. I'm really enjoying it. Once again, I have the text version, and I have the audio version. And I I enjoy both. I I love it. Uh, It's it's fantastic. I have both versions because, because I write questions for our book club. Now, first of all, you can get the audio book for free. Wonder by R.J. Palacio. Just go here, www.audibletrial, that's A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L dot com. Once again, www.audibletrial.com slash L M E. Let's master English L M E. So once again, www.audibletrial.com slash L M E. They are our sponsor. So if you sign up, you can get this book for free. And uh, that's an awesome deal because this book is a little bit expensive. And it's a beautiful book. It's a big book. But once again, it's written for children. So Right. Our book club members say they love it. It's easy to understand. It's very nice and uh, they identify with the book. And our book club is growing and it's it's great fun. Every week on Thursdays, uh, maybe not every week, but usually every week on Thursdays, um, for me, I think it's 11 in the morning. I think in Europe, it's like 8 p.m., something like that. They have a live book club get together. And they've got, now I think they have two guys and like four or five women. And they all get together. And I'm there too. I'm there, on, especially on text. Uh, but we have a leader. And we discuss questions of the book. We discuss the book, what we liked, what we didn't like. We talk about personal stories. And it's fantastic. It's really, uh, it's wonderful. The book club is great. You discuss the book that you are reading and people share their experience. It's really nice and we welcome you to join the book club. It's absolutely free. Okay, of course you need to read the book. We prefer that you listen to the book, get the audio book, but you need to get the book and then you can join. Send me an email, dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. Just send me an email and uh, I'll hook you up with the person who coordinates the book club. Once again, Wonder is the book we're studying. W-O-N-D-E-R. The author is R.J. Palacio. The last name P-A-L-A-C-I-O. It's not too late. Get the book now. You can get it for free. The next book next month, I haven't decided what the next book will be, but I will let you know. Okay? Uh, I should tell you about the book club. If you sign up and get the audio book for free, it's great. Um, At the end of a month, your membership begins. And the membership is $14.95 a month. Now, and they will charge you. So you can cancel before that. But if you just want one free book and then you're going to cancel, eh, don't do it. If you're serious about the book club and serious about listening to audiobooks, then join, 
Okay, and what happens is they'll charge you fourteen dollars and ninety five cents, and you can choose any book, one book a month. So, for example, this book, Wonder, is actually twenty dollars, but if you paid the fourteen dollar ninety five cent membership fee, you can still get that book and not pay the extra money. Okay, so do you understand? So that it's one charge, one book, and it's a pretty good. It's a great deal. You save five bucks, that's 25% off. So it's a great deal. Anyway, you have to know that information. Okay, I think that's about it. I hope that you guys enjoyed the podcast. It's great to be back. I missed you. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next week. Take everybody together. Let's master English. English.